Hi, and thank you for joining us in our podcast called The Growth Journey. This is a place where you will start your personal growth and development. I'm glad you're here. I'm your host, Cheryl Hart. In our episode today, we will talk about the cause of your dream. So what is your dream? Do you think you will achieve it in your lifetime? I'm sure you hope you will. But will you actually do it? What odds would you give yourself? One in five? One in a hundred? How can you tell whether your chances are good or whether your dream will always remain exactly that? A dream. In this episode, we will cover the reasons why people don't identify their dreams. And then we will go into two questions on how to test your dream. In one of Chan Maxwell's best-selling book called Put Your Dreams to the Test, John says, Dreams are valuable commodities. They propel us forward. They give us energy. They make us enthusiastic. Every day or everyone ought to have a dream. But what if you're not sure whether you have a dream you want to pursue? Well, let's face it. Many people were not encouraged to dream. Others have dreams but lose hope and set them aside. So let me ask you this. Do you have a dream? Do you know if it is your own dream or someone else's dream? But first, let's find out what are the five common reasons people have not to pursue or identify in their dream. Number one, discourage from dreaming by others. We call them dream crushers or ideal killers. They don't have any dreams of their own, but don't want to see anyone else succeed with their dreams either. Number two, hindrance by past disappointments and hurts disappointments is the gap between expectation and reality. Failure is the price we must pay for success. Number three, habit of settling for average. Dreams require a person to stretch, to go beyond average. You can't reach for a dream and beyond safety mediocre at the same time. Number four, lack of confidence needed to pursue a dream. It takes confidence to talk about a dream and even more to pursue it. And sometimes, confidence separates the people who dream and pursue them, pursue those dreams from those who don't. Number five, some people lack the imagination to dream. Imagination is the soil that brings a dream to life. No matter what our age or conditions will be, There are still untapped possibilities within us and new beauty waiting to be born. It's never too late to dream. So consider some of the reasons we just discussed where you might be struggling with your dream. And I want you to think about what it will take to propel you forward to the next steps or making those dreams come true. In thinking about the answering the questions and I want to emphasize that there are 10 steps to con- conquering your dreams but in this episode we'll cover two out of ten of them so let's get started the first question to testing your dream is the ownership here is a question for you are you living your dream or the dream someone else has for you Have you heard someone will tell you, oh, you know what, you should be a nurse or doctor or an engineer or architect because your mom or dad, your uncle or aunt is. So I think you should too. Are you taught you always wanted to be a musician, a teacher, an actor, but your parents wanted you to be a doctor or engineer instead? and you didn't want to disappoint them. It's funny how they seem to know who we are going to be when we grow up except ourselves. 
So more than likely, we will go what they told us to do. So in my early 20s, my mom was very, very sick. She is always in a hospital. And at, at that time, the hospital is almost my second home because I always there. I always come and visit every day after work. It's about one hour drive from my workplace to the hospital. I got the opportunity to know the doctors, the nurses, the cafeteria personnel, the receptionist, even the security guard and the sales clerk at the gift shop. So every time I came and visit, and someone will ask me where I'm from or what nationality I am, I will then say, I, I was born in Philippines and I am a Filipina. So right away, they will ask me back and said, Oh, you're a Filipina? So you must be a nurse. Every single time, they will assume that I am a nurse because I am a Filipina. As if it was written in my forehead that says, I am a nurse. Mind you, there are lots of Filipina nurses in every country in every part of the world. So hats off to all our Filipina nurses. So now I was thinking, huh, maybe I should be a nurse. Because people already assume that I am, so why not? Maybe I should. So then as a go-getter I am, I went home and I did my research and search on how to become a certified nurse assistant or CNA to start with. I did not hesitate. I went in and signed up. I paid. I took the class. And then when we get to the point where we are going or we're doing the actual job at the hospital where I had to help, quote unquote, clean up and lift a 300 pound patient, I will say, okay, I think this is not for me. I made a mistake and I think I waste my time and money. This is not for me at all. And the environment's not for me. So I realized that I am more into business and sales, train, coach, and mentor. And being a nurse is not for me. Though being a nurse, the doctors are very honorable and hard profession out there. So my hat's off to all nurses and doctors out there and they do a they do make a difference in saving lives every day. But to me, it wasn't for me. So you see, when the dream is right for the person and the person is right for that dream, the two cannot be separated from each other. For something to truly be your dream, you need to see the possibility it represents. And you need to want it, want it. Ownership is the first vital step to fulfilling a dream. So let's discuss how to take ownership of your dream. Number one, be willing to be on yourself. You may succeed if nobody else believes in you, but you will never succeed if you don't believe in yourself. Also, if you don't try and try hard enough, you will regret it and looking back and say, I wish I could have done that. Many people living with a lot of regrets in their life and you don't want to be one of them. You want to be the person that would say, if I relive my life again, I will do this over and over again. I may change a few things here and there, but overall, I will do it again. Number two, lead your life instead of accepting your life, making the right decisions and managing those decisions daily. The power of choice is the greatest power that a person possess. We make decisions every day and those decisions that we made, that we have made, led us and bring us to where we are today. So take a look at your life journey so far. How many of those decisions that you have made that you are most proud of? And how many of those you are not so proud of? If something that you, you are not proud of, the good news is you can still make a change today. Every day is a new day and I bring you a new opportunities to make it right. 
So make today the best day and your tomorrow will be brighter. Number three, love what you do and do what you love. Successful people, those who see and seize their dreams, love what they do and do what they love. They allow their passion and talent to guide them. Why? Because talent, pursuit, and potential always come hand in hand. Personally, I never took job, just any job or position in my career. That I didn't like. Every time I took a job or, or position, I always make sure that this is what I wanted to do. You won't see me bounce around doing different jobs or changing work with a different companies. In fact, I stayed in a company since I started since in my teenage year. Though I switched positions in my role within the company, but because I would like to expand and to learn and to grow. However, many people, they keep switch, switching jobs like changing clothes. Just because they pay, they think they pay more or what have you, whatever the reason will be, they believe that that's the best approach. Be very careful on the shiny object syndrome, which means it sounds good and looks good and then pay you more, but you have to ask yourself these questions. Would this new job or position will help me to get to where I wanted to be? Am I passionate about what I do with this new position or just because I will like to earn a decent amount of paycheck? So remember, Love what you do and do what you love. So therefore, every day you don't feel like work anymore. It is your calling and you're fulfilling your purpose in life and that and what you are called to do. Number four, don't compare yourself or your dream to the others. When you compare yourself with those superior meaning those who has a higher ranking or status, you feel inferior, meaning you feel low ranking or low status. When you compare yourself with those inferior, you feel superior. When you stop comparing yourself with others, you feel empowered. Success is doing the best you can with what you have, whatever your life starts. It is also a good reminder that we are all running our own race. Everyone is in a different status, different stages of their lives. Some takes longer than others. But in reality is, this is the life and the dream you are trying to create and trying to build. And it's not for them. It's yours. So do it your own way. Number five. Believe in your vision for the future even when others don't understand you. You are not an accident. You are here for a reason. If success is not on your own terms, if it looks good to the world but doesn't feel good in your soul, it is not success at all. The potential that exists within us is limitless and largely untapped. When you think of limits, you created them yourself. So when you take ownership of your dream, you commit to your dream. So what's your le le level of commitment to your dream? On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being it will be nice to have, and 10 being I lose sleep at night because I want, I want it so bad. And if it's less than 8, you need to decide if your dream is a truly your dream. What would I do if I had no limitations? Also, a good question for you too. What would I do if I knew I couldn't fail? The first step is being able to answer is to take ownership of your dream and prepare to start moving forward. We just talk about owning your dream and another component of testing your dream is the cost of the dream. I'm not talking about just dollars and, dollars and cents. Dreams are personal, very personal, and many people avoid the question, avoid the cost, and avoid the dream. 
Have ever sacrificed something to achieve your dream? How do you answer the cause of your dream questions? Am I willing to pay the price for my dream? Here are a few key points to consider the cause of your dream. Number one, the dream is free, but the journey isn't. At some point, you have to make a transition from believer of the dream to a buyer of the dream. No dream comes true without somebody paying for it. I paid mine for my dream and I was still paying for it and I will continue on to pay for it. It is my dream to make an impact, one person at a time, one teaching at a time, and make a difference to those people who would like to make a difference as well. So how about you? Are you a buyer of your dream? And are you ready to pay for it? Number two, the price must be paid sooner than you think. Dream believers are in abundance. Dream buyers are rare. Number three, the price will be higher than you expected. Never once in my conversation with successful people have I heard the words, getting to the top was much easier than un I anticipated. There's no such thing. Everything worthwhile is uphill. Number four, the price must be paid more than once. The statement used to describe this process is, you've got to give up to go up. Number five, it is possible to pay too much for your dream. If you ruin your health or sacrifice your family, even though you achieve your dream, you won't be able to enjoy it. So perhaps you're wondering just what are the types of cause of your dream? One is, Time. Time with your family and your friends. For example, instead of watching Netflix or HBO shows, you're working on your dream. I prepare my podcast lessons recording after work at night when everyone goes to bed and on weekends. Instead of doing happy hour with friends, you're working on your dream. Lack of time, kids, and work should be not be should be the reason not an excuse for not doing it we all had 24 hours in a day i have 24 hours you got 24 hours nobody gets 25 hours in a day the thing is how do we manage those time out of those 24 hours in a day how many how much of those time is spent towards your dream even if just 30 minutes in a day or one hour in a day, every day consistently, you are working your dreams. You will get there. We just have to learn how to manage those hours. You have to be cautious though as far as family time and friends. You still have to spend time with your family and friends, especially with any special occasions. The dream that you are trying to build should not sacrifice your relationship with them. You still want to be part of their lives. The dream that you are building and creating is for them, especially if you have spouse or kids. If you have great relationship with your family and friends, they will be your champion, your cheerleader, your motivation to keep going and your support system. Always keep this in mind that you do not want to sacrifice your relationship with them because those are important to your success. Anthony Brandt have said, other things may change us, but we start and end with a family. To number two, dealing with criticism from people who matter. Everyone who pursue a dream is criticized and have and you have to learn to ignore it, or well, professional at least do ignore it. Winston Churchill said, oh, you have enemies? Good. That means you've stood up for something or something in your life. Sometimes we are the greatest critic of ourselves. 
It is very fascinating that we are self-sabotage our own and I thought this quote says it all. So take a listen to this. I am my own biggest critic before anyone else has criticized me. I have already criticized myself. But for the rest of my life, I am going to be with me and I don't want to spend my life with someone who is always critical. So I am going to stop being my own critic. It is time that I accept all the great things about me. From Joy Bell. Isn't it true that we are the most critical critics of ourselves? Here's another one from Dale Carnegie. Any fool can criticize, complain, and condemn, and most fools do. But it takes character and self-control to be understanding and forgiving. Shannon Alder have said, Often those that criticize others reveal what he himself lacks of. So number three, pay the price of overcoming your fears. All dreams are outside our comfort zone. Otherwise, we would already have realized the dream. To leave that zone is a price we must pay to achieve them. Paul Martinelli, my great mindset and business mentor in my Jan Maxwell team, had taught me this regarding overcoming your fear. Do it afraid and build your wings on the way down. So I'm now telling you this, that if you are working in your dream and you are afraid to do it, well, do it afraid. You will not going to be good for the first time, but at least you did the first steps and get you out of your comfort zone. That's the price you will need to pay. You will not have all the answers right away, but the answers that you need lay upon when you, when you took that first step and started and continue on to move forward to better yourself. So do it afraid and build your wings on the way down. Number four, pay the price of hard work. When it comes to success, there are no escalators to ride. You must work hard and smart. To achieve your goals, there is no easy way. If it were easy, then everybody already living their dreams. John Roth have said, don't wish it were easier, wish you were better. There are no shortcuts to any place worth going. The difference between ordinary and extraordinary is to do that little extra. So what is your dream worth? That's what you need to figure out if you are unsure about your answer to the cost question. You need to count the cost. Seek out someone with experience in your area of interest. Ask him or her to give you some information and advice about what it takes to achieve success in that field. Then you need to ask yourself, how much am I willing to pay for my dream? And what am I not willing to pay? Remember, some prices are higher. So I hope you found this lessons valuable and something that you can look at your own dream and how to make them a reality. So always remember that the bigger the dream, the higher the cost. If you are willing to pay what it is like, likely to cost you, you need to change your dream or change what you are willing to pay. If this is the first time that you are listening into our podcast, well, feel free to subscribe so you will get notified as soon as the episode is posted. Also, feel free to share this episode to anyone you know, especially if they are working on their dreams. Well, who knew? You may help them in some ways to push through it and make it a reality. Also, feel free to send comments, feedback, or suggestions on what topic you would like to hear in our next episode. So feel free to email us at shareiheart.com. I will read them all. It will be great to know that this episode or the past week's episode had helped you in your growth journey. Also, feel free to check out our website at 
shareiheart.com. Depending on when you are listening to this episode, feel free to sign up so you will be included in our email list. We'll let you know as soon as the course is available. So before I signed off, I would like you to always remember this. If you don't invest in your own personal growth, no one will. Take care and be well.